So we're going to start. Um, and we have no public participation this evening, so apologies we have from a bit more than was working. Any declarations of interest? No, I don't know if it's anything they can say so. Minutes are here for the last meeting to note. Recommendations from other committees, we have none. We need to go straight to item six, uh, HMO licensing and fees policy. And we have a paper, I think this one should be this, but I think it's not an IT folk. So I'm trying to use PDF. It's really not. Um, so I can look at the top papers, so I can't see who wrote it here. So I get to it. So I think this was normal. So um, Paul would have uh, gone for this one first, but I think it's pretty straightforward. Steps fees that should be before. Does anyone have anything to recommend? It's not really. Um, I was at that meeting when we went through this. Um, part of this is to change the fact that patients because we weren't actually covering um, our costs that we're in this um, <clears throat> it's, it's more to clarify that there's a two stage approach to the payments as uh, was. Uh, 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 there was case law set in a tribunal that we need to bring in, and the old policy didn't make that clear. Um, the fee value itself is actually part of the annual fees and charges, so we get the fees in that place to the way now. Okay, anyone else? No, okay, good. In which case, um, to put happy with that one, we can go straight to item seven. Uh, empty and second home council tax premium. Um, debt is not. Here, um, but I guess it's straightforward to do you know how to use the loss to pay Yeah, the only thing I was going to say was um, I imagine if someone is in this position, they know this charge was coming or loaned to them. I just wonder what the, if, if there is a, uh, what communications are like. We don't know that. They would know that it's, I was we know it's not the responsible person. Yeah. I just ask a question on it. Um, it might not be the answer because the question's not here. Um, but on this one, does this cover council housing as well or housing associations? But we know um, in the last few years we've had some housing association properties that have been empty for a long period of time. It does, and we, mm. we should chase those. Um, we're aware we should chase them. So, yeah, Thank you. That's our own. We will never have any homes at the top. The situation but instantly out of the council. All right. And, and on that, how do we follow up that they are and do we keep them once we know they're able to sure. find them and if they are separate, um, put them around at the end of the year? So there's a relationship here between the tax chasing function and the business function. And, uh, in theory, you could get to the point where you need to go back to a larger in that, in that respect, then, how do we know that there aren't people that have been empty for a while? How do we know it's not Sorry? I'm going to send an email. Can check it? No, no, seriously, I mean, it's just because obviously if someone does know about it, you know, it's people, you find, people generally try desperately hard not to pay extra capital tax because it's about saving money. So, uh, so we tend to then we'll find out pretty quickly when things get off like desperate approaches to themselves so typically putting one person in the eat for every day and the same with you because they can then get the council tax discount for a single person so that ratchet is there pretty well self-regulated so, so until someone moves in and says that we're going to keep doing the attempt but from a member's perspective yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so when you're out delivering your leaflets, yeah. and you remember the property in Asia Avenue, mm. it's still empty, it's still empty for the last six months, you never have any email yeah. um, And you, you'll occasionally, just occasionally, you'll find it actually is on. It's a repeat. Mm, yeah. You know, it just sits there, permanent line. Yeah. Um, and even the condition of property is on it. Uh, mm. So, mm. it's kind of trouble in terms of the yeah, on item 17, second home premium, applying a premium of 100 percent for second home properties to increase income by 346,000, of which the council's share are this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I saw clarification on that. I just wanted to yeah, double check that. There was a missing apostrophe between the L and the S. Yes, yeah. yes that, that's that's really what I'm picking up. Yeah, it's not a game, but 
it's useful. It's useful because people wouldn't necessarily appreciate that. So we are doing to make that decision, and all the other yes. people who get council to actually benefit from all the other presets of authority. The Hampshire and Hampshire will never get most of the time. So okay. it's the collection of final studies that we need, of which we are responsible. Sure. Sure. Because we're the one defining the policy in this case. Yeah. So we're being very beneficial. Hopefully, the council has some record. Oh. Our generosity. I'm not trying to charge the shit. All right, we have with this one. That, that gave that more of an area we might step. Yeah, that's really good. We move on to item eight, then approval of uh, Trump's six housing policies. Um, we often get comments from the from these reports. Um, so actually he's been doing all these things. Yeah, I'm Amber. Um, tell us who you are, Amber. Oh, pleased to meet everybody. Well, thank you for having me here as an observer, not a presenter tonight. Uh, but I'm the recently appointed head of housing. This is my fourth week. Um, so I've been um, getting to know Sue and Nick and um, Martin, who are the other members of the team, as well as Pete and um, some of the other faces around the table. Um, so, yes, yeah, Sue's been working hard on these policies. Um, I've had a quick look through and um, you don't seem to be missing anything, which is which is reassuring. Um, but I haven't read them enough to answer any questions. So if there are any questions, I'm going to take the back and get answers for you. <laughs> next time. Yeah, the next time, definitely. But I'm hoping to be involved with a group who I know do a lot of work behind the scenes before these um, papers come forward. So uh, I know there's another tranche to come yet. So uh, yeah, I'll be involved with the start. These tranches, do you feel that they're going off uh, to show us how many policies that's done by HRV? Definitely. And, that's my background. I think Sue's got to be 30, so um, yeah, she's got a hard background. But um, yeah, now I'm here, I'll definitely be casting my uh, eye over them as well. But I'm sure you've all done a great job. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Well, welcome, of course. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll be uh, delighted to be using your services uh, uh, extremely so over the next period of time as we get this stuff up and running and we'll all over the time. Very exciting. It's exciting time. It is. And uh, hopefully, you're You'll feel that sense of enthusiasm across the organisation mm -hmm. for doing new and different things, which for most councils go in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah, sorry, um, I'm not going to be on somebody's cross, on somebody's Christmas card, let's give you only your cross, but under appendix three, um, which is on the page 105.1, there is to be a word missing the end of that last sentence. Sorry, that, or we're going back a few times with all the English. Uh, on any issues that are identified in how they would be, which is how they would be rectified or resolved. Yes, yes, indeed. Very good. Well, spot. Otherwise, it is a bit Shakespearean. It? Well, it is, it is how they would be. Or not to be. We're guessing interest probably, but um, it'll be it'll be it'll be it'll be it'll be Sorry about that. Well done. You get the gold star. Uh, well, actually, you James, doing, you do, you James doing the apostrophe as well. Like, I'll you, accept the problem. So, clearly on, clearly on the floor this evening, one of those. Um, did anyone have any other issues? I mean, what I read through these, these seem straightforward ish. Some more than others are there to do. Um, but uh, I've been very surprised at such a No? Okay. All right, good. Take those agreed then. The local nature and country strategy. Uh, this is a plan and policy paper that Dawn's written and we pick up any technical questions. Apparently, yeah. That does anyone have any technical questions or indeed anything else I have to say? This, this again looks helpful and straightforward and good, good direction to go. So um, I'm going to take that as a say. Yeah, brilliant. Good. Right, item 10 the best value notice update. Um, 60 odd pages of, uh, I think we're all familiar with the uh, government uh, muddling around experience of the uh, of government here. Um, and uh, did anyone have anything new they wanted to say? No, I think we've had that point already. So that's good. Moving on. Uh, Conflict challenge action paid plan. We've gone through this again uh, offline. Um, all good sense. The corporate picture I thought was really helpful. Again, as always, uh, thanks to the marketing team, uh, Carissa, who's right here, me, um, on, on, on this one. Um, and um, and this, is, this is where the collaborative bit of the government working together actually is beneficial, as opposed to the local level. 
Uh, so um, are we happy to agree with this? Yes, we are. All right. Page 237 then, financial assistance policy, uh, which is going to say what? Yeah, this one's a list of them as well. Um, uh, so it is plain. Okay, so it, is, it says I can't get to the end of the paper sometimes <laughs> with this advice. But um, did anyone have any questions they wanted to pick up on this one? This, yeah. this is around the energy, yeah, mm -hmm. which is why I should have. So, yeah, very much. Just, just very quickly, I mean, just mentioning in there, I know it's important um, about the ones that persons are either move or who comes to property in the and PFP, etc., or for them to the schools that um, we would then potentially recover. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mention in there whether or not we can make good if we do recover, depending on what we recover. Could be quite expensive to do that. I mean, there must be a balance in there. You're saying, I'm going to look at that room as opposed to the normal bar. You know, we would decide to take it out. But if there's a policy that says that we can look to recover some as possible, would we be then saying potentially to the person who either owns the property next or if it's a landlord or whatever, would we then be offering it for sale to that person who owns the property? Would we be looking to um, obviously to make good stuff? Obviously, that's not going to say how the movement is off the movement upstairs. Yeah, so what's the mechanism for doing that? Uh, so, uh, the the recovery is uh, primarily around um, equipment, so it wouldn't be structural adaptations. Um, so it would be spare lifts, receiving track hoists, or um, uh, ramping, modular ramping, things like that. Um, the nature of the equipment that is generally recovered at the moment um, does not require any substantial making good. Um, stair lifts are normally uh, fitted over the top of the existing stairs, um, and so there would be a couple of screw holes that would be filled, but otherwise it's not um, substantial. If there's electrical connections that are where we can put in for them, those would be left um, in, in situ, but obviously either um, made safe or blank plates fitted. Um, but it's normally fairly minor works as part of the removal uh, process. Um, and most of those making good costs are actually absorbed by the companies that we have agreements with around them recovering their equipment um, so that we don't actually absorb that particular cost. We just have to pay the cost of the removal and storage whilst it's uh, being managed. Um, um, yeah, just just to add, some of this came about with with um, knowledge that we've got as councillors and what's happening. Yeah, um, and a lot of it is um, we rely on as an association, but mm -hmm. when people have moved out, and they don't always tell us. Mm -hmm. um, but we can't do anything. If I'm right, I think there's nothing legally that we can do to force them to tell us. It's just the good thing, which is. Even more frustrating because um, one example I'll give you: my, my neighbour had a stairless um, record box to receive and left for the next penny. That stairless was ripped out to the top of that. Um, you know, it is our cost that, that they're in. So it's really frustrating that there is nothing legally in place that says the Housing and Association must tell us when that box becomes available and that they can go in and take the effect that was our goods. Because we pay for it. Mm. Um, so, you know, if, if there was able to be a change in law, that would benefit us. Um, but it's also why our grants are being chucked and taken for granted. Well, I know, I know it was to be how long it was to pay, but it was the case that our housing association did remind us in the risk attack to take away the attack using it. So, yeah, it's just something to think about. At least from council, which everyone is very used to but they very good at the use of the mm -hmm. stuff too. So, I had a meeting with Bill about that, and for that, that particular reason, just you know, make it they're saying it's a risk for them to take it out, but it's ours, it's the it it's not taken out from scratch. So, yeah. um, and we speak to Bill about it and see if we're bored about it. You need some common sense, but at the same time, so. yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm. all right, anything else that was raised on this one? 
No, okay, good. We can take that as one well, yeah, that's all of the public papers. And I don't think there's any traction of public hearing to get into the room. Uh, so we can move into it. So business.